I'm on a rhythm and choose road trip across the heartland of Dixie, on a mission to discover all about their musical and culinary delights. I've left Memphis behind and I'm traveling 200 miles across state to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to be tackling the tastiest ribs in town and checking out the latest cowboy fashion. But first, I'm off to have a nose around the Country Music Hall of Fame. Your pain. Country music has been the backbone of American culture since the early 1900s, giving us some of the world's first musical superstars. Well, this is a cowboy's car if ever I seen one. You're definitely getting the most driving around town in this bad boy. Growing up for me, Gareth Brooks was massive. Westlife recorded one of his songs, one of the biggest selling country music artists of all time. Oh, and this is the Taylor Swift guitar that's made out of coal wood. And my little boy's name is Cole. For me, it's really cool to see a coal wood guitar in the flesh. So here we have Don McCurry. Now, I've never heard his music before, but tonight I'm going to hear him singing at the Grand Ole Opry. So I'm looking forward to that. RCA Records looks after some of the biggest names in today's pop music, from Usher to Britney. And I'm here at RCA Studio B to find out about some of the first artists that were signed and to talk about how the Nashville sound was created. And it's also the label who first signed Westlife. Tell us about some of the legends that have recorded in here. Elvis came in here to record for the first time in 58. He went on to record 262 songs in this room. Wow. But he wasn't the only one. He had the great Roy Orbison, uh -huh. Dolly Parton, certainly. And this piano that was set at, uh, you told me earlier on that Elvis has spent nearly <laughs> 150 hours sitting at this piano. Oh, yeah, it's a 1942 Steinway Grand, and it's been on thousands of records. In this room, there were more than 45,000 songs recorded. Yeah. Over a thousand of those were top ten hits. How did the Nashville sound actually come about? Well, it happened really um, sort of as a response to the success of rockabilly uh -huh. and early rock and roll. The record buying public began to buy those records and as a result country record sales sank. And so the Nashville sound was created and basically what that was is they kind of kept the traditional country melodies the same. Yeah. But they took off all the steel guitars and banjos and fiddles and they replaced them with big orchestral arrangements. The records sold bigger than any country records had ever sold uh -huh. before in the millions for the first time. This little hub of America is responsible for some of the biggest sounds in the world when it comes to music. It's amazing, isn't it, when you think about traditional country music, uh, bluegrass music, jazz, rock and roll, the blues, gospel. All of it came from this little region of America. Well, Keith, thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. Now, I can't pass up the opportunity to be sitting at a piano that Elvis has played on and to not touch the keys. Please do. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Nashville is America's country music capital, but the food scene is getting in on the act too, from soul food to barbecue joints. And I've heard that this place serves the best rack of ribs in town. Hello, Brett. Hi, Keith. Nice to meet you. How are you man. doing? I hope I'm not disturbing your lunch. You're not. Nashville has always been very well known for the music, but lately food is certainly making its own noise here too. Well, the music brought the food. And food and music go together very well. I mean, from the beginning of time, people would get together, they eat, people would get together and play music. So it just fits. Why is barbecue food so big in this part of the U.S.? Well, it's awesome. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a great food. Um, it actually started with, back in the day, it's um, these tougher cuts of meat were given to the slaves. And so basically, they used that meat and they would put it on their fire all day long. Okay. They'd go work in the fields and come back and eat barbecue. Well, obviously, in turn, they got very good at it. What have you got here in front of you? Right here, we got fried pickles, which is a staple of the South. It's just a uh, battered pickle. We fry them in uh, some oil and okay. uh, serve them with the jalapeno ranch. This is brisket. This is actually kind of a Texas-style uh, barbecue. It's brisket sliced thin with a little bit of our homemade sauce on top. It looks great. So what, what's this we have here, Brad? This is a moonshine margarita. What is moonshine? Moonshine is unaged whiskey. Oh, Ooh, cheers, brother. This. Thank you. That's a, cheers. That, that's a southern margarita right there. Okay. Wow. Welcome to Got the south. <laughs> Kick to it. <laughs> so, dude, I've heard about your ribs. I'm not leaving here until I try them. Apparently, they're the best ribs in town. So I need some of them right here, right now. Well, I got a rack coming for you right now. Great stuff. Thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. That is one big rack of ribs. Split them down the middle, I say. Yeah, take a bite. Tell me what you think. Mmm, that's amazing. <laughs> well, I have to say, this is probably the best food that we've had on the trip so far. I would highly recommend coming here for a rack of ribs.
Cheers, my man. Moonshine, baby! Yeah! With a full belly of ribs and moonshine, I'm starting to feel like a local. But I also need to look the part, so it's time to grab myself a cowboy hat and boots. But I'm gonna be where the lights What do you think of that? <laughs> like a rhinestone cowboy. I kinda think this is the one. Got my boots, got my hat, we're off to the Grand Ole Opry. As these boots were made for walking, I'll break them in at the world famous Grand Ole Opry. It's considered to be the most famous stage in the U.S. And I'm right here to soak up tonight's atmosphere and to hear some country music on the stage that made it famous. Some of the biggest names in country music have played here, from Keith Urban to Carrie Underwood, American Idol winner 2005. And to sing on this iconic stage, you have to be a member of the country music elite, like Grammy Award winning Del McCory. Hello, Dan. Hey, Ken, how, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah. Boys, that was amazing. Thank you very yeah. much. It was uh, amazing to be in the room listening to some amazing music like that and, and a legend like yourself, Dan. Well, thank, thank you very you. much. I appreciate so, that. Dan, if you can tell me, what does it mean to play here at the Grand Ole Opry? You know, it's it's probably the greatest show on earth in my mind, you know. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of folks like to play other places, you know, but I... It, it is. It's really an exciting place to play. You guys are, are technically a bluegrass band. Can you tell us the difference between bluegrass and country for the viewers at home? Well, you know, bluegrass uh, is, for the most part, acoustic. You know, yeah. of course, a lot of the bands, you know, have integrated uh, electric into their music, you Indeed. know. Uh, and it's kind of a mix of electric instruments and acoustic instruments, which they play over microphones. We were down at the Country Music Hall of Fame today, and we saw you in amongst so many other legends. How does that feel to be a part of that? I'm really overwhelmed when I walk in the Country Music Hall of Fame because they have all of the the people that I listened to growing up, and of course the Grand Ole Opry when they age, you know, it's, you just think about all the people that played there before me, you know. <laughs> And it's what makes you forget words to songs and things like <laughs> that, you know. <laughs> Del, thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure, gentlemen. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Ken. Thank All you. that's left for me now to end my road trip in Nashville is to see you guys play at the Grand Ole Opry. Have a good one. All thank right. you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yeah. Time to grab myself a seat to watch the one and only Del McCory. Next time, I'll be exploring the French Quarter, listening to some authentic jazz and gospel music, and learning how to cook a Creole dish in the grand dam of American cities, New Orleans.